Do you know Ramanujam is celebrated as one of the most recognized mathematician of his own time? Ramanujam's work of infinite series is the one of the recognized work being done by the ma Indian mathematician. But you would be surprised to know Ramanujam was not even a proper trained mathematician. He did all the study by himself. This is probably applicable not just for Acharya Ramanujam but for all of us. A proper dedication, a proper effort and with sheer luck we can actually do anything. If you are looking for any MATLAB based training and MATLAB based workshop, MATLAB Helper is one of the platform where you can actually get the guidance. You can enroll in one of our courses and study various courses which we have designed through our website portal. I would like to thank Arawat Foundation at this time because they are working in the field of STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics for the betterment of mankind. Arawat Foundation is working with an objective of to assist human progress through science and technological advancement. If you are looking to support the cause of Arawat Foundation, visit their website www.arawat.ngo and check for a course which you can participate in. In the next part, we are going to talk about how we are going to fetch the data from Excel sheet into MATLAB. We will be applying on pre-processing portion. We will be talking about how we are going to assume things through probability model and several parts. So stay tuned to the coming part. So our next step is to fetch the data from Excel to MATLAB. How can we do that? Either we need to write the code, do all the processing and fetch it or we can simply use the import data in our home section. I am clicking on import data. It will ask me to choose the file. I have kept all the files in the data folder. So for example, let me start with team performances. Now I have selected team performances into my MATLAB directory it's taking some time while we fetch the data it will be showing its completely separate portrayal of the application we will have the option to choose from table column and all the kind of elements inside it so now you are seeing all the values in it what we are going to do in it is we are going to keep let's say this is text again the span is in a text format rest all are into the number format so i'm just cross checking whether all the information it's mentioning is in the proper fashion or not i'm allowing it to have the value as completely table it's saying replace unimportable cells with any n so rather than that let's keep it replace un unimportable cells with zero and we can either do the import data, we can either have generate script or generate function. Since we are going to utilize this for different uh, sheets, we are going to have a function generated. So I have clicked on generate function. Now this is a system default function or system generated function. So in this all the codes come automatically and we need to change it to suit it with all different sheets which we really want to align it with. Now I have already done it but before showing into that I will be talking a step by step point what exactly I have done. So it says in the input that if no sheet is specified read for sheet but we are going to consider that the sheet would be shared by us. Next it mentions whether if roast uh, start and end points are not specified define defaults. So start row is equals to 2. This is going to happen for all the sheets in all the Excel files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to even remove this sheet uh, start row from the starting and let's keep it directly end row option. And let me remove this part because the end row would be different in all the sheets. See in all it's 28. The last row in 10y is 22 in five year this is 21 so this is happening different in all the sheets we are going to do it manually one by one that's the part we can do because this is only a one-time job for us so i'll be removing this sheet for now next it mentions workbook file name sheet names print name and all the information you need to pass the function 
so either we can select data folder or we can do one thing let's do it in a fashion workbook file name is equals to uh, we are assuming the data folder is not uh, is not given in the input part input will just have the excel file name and whatever the file name excel is assigned it will be added to it in this form factor and our workbook file would be ready to go we will get the data from xls read uh, next it's going to convert the data into temporary row block we will have the all the data into a string and row form factor finally all these values whichever we are able to find out will be converted into a table form factor and we'll have all these parameters including team span mat font lost tied nr and all these parameters to us as an output so to show it i would like to take uh, the example let's say i'm just saving import file for you and i want to import the file name uh, workbook file name let's keep it the file name as what shall be the file name it was team performances so team performances dot xlsx the sheet name so i'm taking all and end row so the end row in all is 28 and let's just assign it to let's say t t all and see it what kind of output we are going to get in it it's a table all the elements are being shown we have team we have the time span matches won lost and all the elements in our t all which is kind of pronouncing as tall let's see if it runs with another variable t 10 y this time so we have 10 y over here the sheet name is same uh, sheet name is different with the excel file name as same and 10 y has the columns up to 22 so i'm going to assign it 22 and run it so this time you are getting a 21 row 13 column sheet so we are going to do the operation manually one by one in a fashion that we need to identify how many number of columns or how many number of rows are there and we just need to change the name of sheet and excel file and we will get the data this is possible for the file name of team performances uh, but we will need to do some additional operation in team versus team because there is the issue of files having australia versus england this versus england part is an example which we need to alter and we need to make it possible to convert that into a different column instead all right so for now i'm just closing this so i'm opening team versus team i'll be showing you the same file as well as import the data into matlab this is our file uh, as i was talking every additional row contains the versus element which we need to remove in our uh, function and let's go into the matlab and import the data in the import data we will be choosing team versus team the file will load we will first change the variables all the variables like text string categor categorical to the proper order we will import this thing into a function format so this is categorical which is converted into text remaining thing are number and are proper and we are doing it properly now i'm just clicking on generate function the file gets generated let me remove start row because this will be by default 2 in our code all the time so let me take start row as 2 uh, i'll remove rest of the thing because these will be the parameters we will be passing logically uh, workbook file name will add data folder we don't want to assign it in the initial phase itself which can be done without any trouble though and that's the workbook file name for us 
next change which we will be making is uh, let's remove this additional stuff which is an empty vector which is not often used to us next we are going to have uh, let's say file name import file tdwc i'm saving it all right so the file is saved uh, workbook file name is changed and let us try to run it with a code so import file tbt word cup i'm running it let's see if it gives us some output all right so it's giving us an output but there is an additional row for uh, the versus item which we now are going to work upon so let me create a next section we need to find out the length of the whole table so this would be size of table output one and let's assign it to length factor what we are going to do is we are going to create a structure this structure will be passing from second row till the last row but with a gap of two so every new value will be stored into that structure for the opposition part so for two in the gap of two and go till the length uh, let's give it a name new row assign it to the opposition with the value of table output table output dot team the first element which shall be i comma 1 uh, I like to show you one more thing like since we need to remove this v and the extra space this is too easy can you think like how can we do it that's damn easy let's say i is equals to two for now so table output this shall give me the value the first one which i remember was new zealand now we need the, the we need to remove three spaces so what if we just take the value from the third element itself until the end so we will be removing two value actually so from third element till the last this is new zealand and in the same fashion we'll just assign it so that's gonna be three to end and uh, since this is again going to be a new column added at every time so this is i by 2 where i is equals to starting from 2 until the end so this part will cover up our uh, code in which we will be getting new rows added let me try and show you what kind of output we are getting so i'm just running with a breakpoint involved let's see what kind of result we can expect so let's continue new row opposition new zealand opposition with two struct opposition with this and if i type new row dot opposition it shall give me the whole value new zealand sri lanka sri lanka all right so this part is done but we need to figure it out how can we actually add it to the original table and remove the rest of the redundant element so let's again create table output we take the value from first row till the last row with the gap of two now and all columns that's gonna be our table one t2 will be our uh, struct converted into table so struct to table new row and we are having an array so for this array we will need to add a parameter as array which makes it true and conversion is successful only with this help of as array and what we can do now is just append the two tables into each other so we will be having the value of t1 first row then t2 completely so t1's first row is team t2 is completely opposition and t3 sorry t1 again would be our uh, all row but starting from second column till the last column and this since t will be our final output let me just rename it to over here as t and now i'll add a breakpoint for t1 okay so it's saying there could be an operation missing let's figure out what may what operation we are missing in it 
if we aren't missing we can actually run it without any fuss alright it looks proper to me let's do one thing let's run it here So it's still saying the same 7421. What are we missing? Can you figure it out? Well, a comma is missing over here. And now the breakpoint will also work. MATLAB is intelligent, it can throw us the error without even running it. So it's actually checking it, checking every time we change the code, like whether there is any applicable error, where anything you need to change. If you will notice in new row also it's giving us a warning like okay um, the value of the row, value of the element is changing after each operation so these kind of issues get impacted and MATLAB is very helpful in this scenario t1 it works so if you want to see t1 contains all the value team span mat want etc and second row the every subsequent second row has been removed now I run T2 so for me T2 is the table of opposition so it's containing all the opposition and let's run one more time so now I have T an opposition table with which has been involved so team opposition span mat won lost tied no result win loss ratio average run per hour inning size score lowest score and we are getting a table now which is exactly in the way we were getting for import file let me just click on continue and this is the result which is being shown so as of now we have received the table out but we need to create a logic in which we can find out all right uh, what is the winning percentage what is the losing percentage so we are going to have a logic set for that and this will be discussed in our next section hello everyone and welcome to our youtube premiere on the mathematics in sports Mathematics Laboratory Live on the auspicious occasion of National Mathematics Day. We celebrate this day in the memory of Acharya Ramanujam, one of the coveted mathematicians from India. As of now, we have discussed about what exactly we are going to cover in this YouTube premiere. So we are going to create an application in MATLAB. We will model a probabilistic model of winning, losing and tie of a cricket match. We will predict winner of every game and the whole competition of ODI World Cup 2019 by simulating and showing all the statistical information and the game scenarios. We have already covered preparing the data using ESP and Crick Info. We have fetched all the data into Excel files. Uh, the parameters which we have obtained are with overall figure against a position. In these two parameters, we have subdivided them into sheets into all competition in England being the host and in World Cup. We have also been divided the components into time span starting from all period that is since beginning till 10 year, 5 year, 4 year, 3 year, 2 year and 1 year. Since World Cup is being played only in every 4 years, it's waste to get any data for 3 year, 2 year and 1 year. And in the case of World Cup, we will be keep the value up till 4 year only. We have already got the World Cup scheduled data and we have already got the map of all playing countries. If in case you need these information, you are not able to do that, you can ask us and we will share it with you guys. Working on MATLAB, we are going to show in this video. You should be following the video or should be following the code and you will be able to do the similar stuff. If you face any issue, you can comment in the section below later whenever you watch the video again or even at this moment you can comment it and one of our team member would be reply to you with whatever suggestions we can provide to your queries. I hope you are enjoying the session and let's go ahead with the portion of talking with respect to what exactly is going to happen. So, we are going to use the teams uh, in a properly structured manner in all of our operations except in point table where we will be having like which team is at which rank. We will be considering the index of uh, teams will be in this particular order that is team 1 would be South Africa, team 2 is Sri Lanka, team 3rd is New Zealand, 4th Bangladesh, 
फिफ्थ अफगानिस्तान सिक्स इंडिया सेवन्थ इंग्लैंड एट पाकिस्तान नाइन्थ वेस्ट इंडीज एंड टेंथ ऑस्ट्रेलिया दीज टीम्स आर प्लेइंग द वर्ल्ड कप एवरी टीम इज गोइंग टू प्ले नाइन मैच अगेंस्ट अदर प्लेयर और अदर कंट्री आफ्टर द सेशन आफ्टर द लीग स्टेज इज ओवर हु एवर द टॉप फोर टीम्स इन द लीग स्टेज वुड बी कम्पीटिंग इन सेमी फाइनल द टू फाइनलिस्ट विल बी मेटिंग एट लॉर्ड्स एंड द वर्ल्ड कप वुड बी ओवर ऑन द वेन्यू ऑफ लॉर्ड्स एट द वेन्यू ऑफ लॉर्ड्स सो वॉट इज आवर स्टेप थ्री इट्स प्री प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ डेटा वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डेटा मैनिपुलेशन और द डेटा विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी प्रोसेस्ड एज ऑफ नाउ वी हैव रिसीव द डेटा इन टू एक्सेल टू मैट लैब सो वी नीड टू फाइंड फ्रॉम द डेटा वेदर द टीम वी हैव रिसीव्ड इन द मैट लैब वेदर इट इज प्लेइंग इन द वर्ल्ड कप और नॉट वंस वी फाइंड दैट वी गेट द इंडेक्स अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस प्रीवियस मैंशन स्टैंडर्डाइज टीम स्कड्यूल सो वी विल यूज दिस इंडेक्स एंड फाइंड द पोजिशन सो दैट वी कैन फाइंड आउट द स्टेटिस्टिक्स बिलोंग टू दिस पर्टिकुलर टीम इन द सिमिलर फैशन इफ फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर कंट्री लेट्स ए अफगानिस्तान वेयर यू डोंट गेट द डेटा अवेलेबल फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ टेन ईयर्स इन इंग्लैंड लेट्स ए दे हैव एंड प्लेड अ मैच ओवर देयर सो वेर एवर डेटा इज नॉट अवेलेबल वी विल बी असाइनिंग दैम इनिशियली विद द टीम नेम एंड ऑल जीरोज लेटर इन द मैनिपुलेशन वी विल बी गिविंग दैम अ प्रोबेबिलिटी लेट्स ए पॉइंट फाइव और पॉइंट थ्री डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द कंडीशन विच आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन द मैट लैब कोड uh we will also prepare the tabular data for team versus team and matrix format for team performances so in uh, this will be discussed uh, this will be discussed like in the team performance we are going to have all the parameters winning percentage losing percentage and tie percentage which you can see in the uh, image in the right side but in the case of uh, table it would be a complete uh, like sorry and team versus team factor it would be a 10 cross 10 table where you would be knowing like okay whether if a team plays with a particular team what are the chances of their winning against them which even includes the tie in that situation so we have factorized our uh, uh, tabular data into different form factors and we will be discussing them now i'll be showing you matlab code again so i have already done all the editing part uh rather than wasting the time in writing i'll be explaining you what exactly i have done in it so if the sheet is team performances which is in our case in the data folder we will be finding let's say it's team performances so we have team span mat won and up to lowest score we are going to utilize only this this much information won lost tied no result and matches apart from the team name rest of the things are not being used in this program but it has a scope to be used if you want to extend the program to your particular need so the future scope has a lot of potential in it uh, what we are going to do is we are going to have a win factor of Let's say if we are talking about team performances, overall figure parameter will have directly win factor of win divided by matches matches minus no result. So if we talk about team England, if we 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 want to find uh, find out whether uh, the win percentage of this team is what exactly is it? If we want to identify the game scenario of England, let's say, so what we will be doing is we will be having won divided by matches played minus no results. this gives us a pro, uh, a winning factor which a particular country has in the similar fashion we can do for lost divided by match minus no result and for the tie tie divided by match minus no result so this model we are going to deploy only and only when we are going teams overall performance into consideration then we are going to use this model so let me take you to this code explaining from since the beginning uh, the starting row is to workbook file name i have a whole, whole set of data into my data folder so i'm using it with an expanded name data all the data is being read converted and fetched into our cell and tabulated using the table format so up till here we have already covered the portion of data fetching now we need to do the manipulation and the data preprocessing so 
वर्ल्ड कप टीम्स आर इन द ऑर्डर एज साउथ अफ्रीका श्रीलंका टिल ऑस्ट्रेलिया विच आई जस्ट शॉन यू ओवर हियर नंबर वन टीम इज साउथ अफ्रीका नंबर टू श्रीलंका नंबर थ्री न्यूजीलैंड फोर बांग्लादेश फिफ्थ अफगानिस्तान एंड सो ऑन टिल ऑस्ट्रेलिया सो दिस इज द सेम पैटर्न आई एम गोइंग टू यूटिलाइज इन एवरी कोड विच आई एम गोइंग टू डेवलप and not just that even in the app which we are going to design we will start by considering the teams are into this order uh, so you have a standardized thing and then it is helpful for you in the operation later on now we will be temporarily creating this uh, assigning the table output to a temporary table and we will be starting with the finding whether the team which is starting for the temporary table whether it is uh, existing in the world cup team or not so let me show you step by step the operation i will be running data import let's say the file name is okay so this is going to be table output and the file name for us is data import so let me just type it over here this is team performances Uh, we are going to have use all sheet and up to let's say I want to use five y and it has the column till twenty first. So I'm going to type five y over here and up till column twenty one. I have added a breakpoint. So when I'm running it, it should stop at this particular line for the ninth. Okay. So right now the value of i is one. If we are going to check. temporary table dot team length so the length is 20 there are 20 teams in this sheet the game is going to be played by only 10 teams we need to find out whether the team which we need for the data does exactly contain or not and if it contains we need to assign the data at proper places so i'm just clicking stop uh, step right now the world cup teams uh over the same order now the first team over here is india now if we use the contains parameter it checks whether all the data which it is mentioning does it contain or not so doing it it says like okay uh, from the 10 world cup teams it contains one at one place so inside that i'm using a find function like find where it is one find function gives us the index location of that so it gives us value 6 so mean index at this point the value of mean index is 6 which you can see from the workspace right side now if in case the index isn't found let's say world cup team was none, just randomly saying it's netherland which is not going to play in the world cup and uh, the data is already there for that so find would come as empty in that situation the loop will continue and just go to the next thing however if you find the data you are going to assign row of me index equals to i so let me just run it once and you will see the value of row so row of 6 uh, at this moment is equals to 1 so in a way i'll be keep on doing the similar thing let me just do it two three more time and then i'll be showing you row so uh, the row first is index 3 index 3 means new zealand so if i am going to see in the sheet starting from the data over here you find the data of okay, new zealand you found for the third then you find the data of oh, sorry south africa is at location 3 new zealand is at location 4 india is at location 1 australia is at location 5 so all these things are over here you can see from the excel sheet as well and let me remove the breakpoint now and run it directly so run by the time the loop is over now every team is being assigned a particular location 3 6 4 9 8 1 2 7 10 and 5 so assuming in one scenario let's say one particular country is not available so what we are going to do next is again we will start the for loop from i1 to 10 because the team will always be 10 in the world cup uh, for the 2019 world cup if the row 
of that particular element is zero, which is our default value. That means that particular team isn't playing, so we will be assigning it a name, new row. Uh, this is a structure, so structure would be later converted into table. Now, new row is assigned the team's name and rest of the values are assigned either empty or zero based on the parameters. So, span, empty and rest all, match, won, loss, tied, no result, everything is assigned as zero. In case the value of i equals to one, that is the first value itself is uh, empty thing. So, table out would be just conversion of structure into a table and since it contains array, so we will be using as array as true input and we have converted the value to a table output. But in case this is not the first value, what we are going to do is the table output which already existing, we will append the value of this new table to that. So table output and structure to table, this thing has been appended to it and the empty row gets assigned to the value which is originally for that team. Now next thing is if i equals to 1. So at the initial value we are going to assign the table output with the temporary tables row index. So let's say I am going to run a break with a breakpoint over here and let's remove the breakpoint over here. So step it removes a breakpoint. Uh, now row of i equals to equals to 0. So row of 1 whether it is 0? No it is not. So if condition doesn't match us. If i equals to 1, yes, this is true. So it goes inside. Tab, uh, table output is temporary table row of i. So row of i is 3 and temporary table of 3 and whole element. So this is 3 and all the element of 3 would be assigned at this stage. When I click next, now I want to show you the table output. So it shows me South Africa 2013 to 18, 102 matches played, 63 won and every information which we need which is exactly what you can see over here 103.63 up till 118 and it's 118 now let's run it one more now uh, i value is 2 whether row of i is 2 no row uh, as i we have already seen that row is not having any value 0 so this condition won't be matching if i equals to 1 no this isn't true so in this situation table output will be appended to whatever the value which was existing with the new value and the new table would be added to it. So I'm just running it and then I'll show you the new table output as well. So now South Africa and Sri Lanka. South Africa 2013 to 18, Sri Lanka 2013 to 18 and all the information are there. So let's do it all and let's remove the breakpoint over here. The breakpoint has been removed and I'm clicking on continue and let me show you the table output now so the first one let's clear it table output so South Africa Sri Lanka New Zealand Bangladesh Afghanistan this was the World Cup team structure which we take which we took over here or you can see from here that's the structure we have which we are following so this is the structure from this Excel table, we have taken the terms and standardization World Cup and assign it to our parameters. So you can see the similar thing over here. Table output is 10 cross 13, 10 rows and 13 columns which contains all the information. Now we have reached to a point where all the table information are there but we don't have the analysis of win percentage, loss percentage and tie percentage. Uh, I have already shown you this formula which we are going to utilize. Win factor is win divided by matches minus no result and similar formula for loss and tie. So going back to the code, won divided by match minus no result, lost divided by match minus no result and table. So all this thing would contain the value. Let's just run step, step, step. Now see, you should see the win, winning percentage. This is the winning percentage of all the teams loss percentage so 0.3657 and all the loss percentage are being shown and type percentage so it's also being shown at this moment now the next thing is at some point we will be having uh, for a particular excel data we might not have even any information for a particular team so let me show you a particular excel sheet uh, which you will be understanding in a better fashion so team performance in one year, one year does contain a lot of information. 
but if we talk about team performances in England, let's assume, and if we talk about team performances in England in last one year only, so in last one year only, England, India, and Australia have played the matches, and no other team has landed in England to play the match. So what we will be doing in that scenario? Let's see it. Okay. So I am going to MATLAB again and I am stopping whatever we have executed, clearing it and removing all the breakpoint and again keeping it at result underscore average. So if I go back and change the file name which would be team performances in England last one year and column contains up to four only. So let's see 4 and run. Alright, so as of now, when I just see the result underscore average, this is the result. Not a number, not a number, not a number, not a number. Because we don't have any value. Either we do not have any value or we are getting, it may be that we are dividing 1 against 0. So there could be a different operation which will uh, effect our program. So what we are going to do is we are going to sh uh, discuss all the possible cases and we will be applying our own mathematical assumption on the probability which may happen on that particular scenario. So for, for ex example, right now not a number is the index which is happening. So I am using index, not a number is fine wherever is NAN win percentage. So find out all the position where not a number is happening. So this gives me an index of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9, wherever any n was obtained. So, this is again uh, useful, let's say, when we have value 0 or 1, we find out like, okay, they have played only one match and based on that one match, it says that the probability of, uh, let's say, India versus Afghanistan and India wins that one match and 1 versus 0 you give the someone or the other team a probability of having a zero win so that is not good and we will be even changing those parameters to even a 0, 0.01 win so that the program is actually able to provide a result not on a bias of only less data available for now we have found not a numbers index if index not a number is not empty then it goes inside this loop and it will assign all the indexes for the value 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. This is with the assumption that winning and uh, losing have an equal probability 0.4 and tie has a probability of 0.2 which is too high but this is due to the lack of data. If you want you can even keep it as 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33. Whatever you want you can do the assumption and you can mention it in your uh, report or wherever you want to discuss it. The reason I'm saying whatever you want is every this is applicable to all the teams. So here we will be moving next and we will be assigning in result average of that particular index node number i. So here it is i is gonna be 1 as well as index is 1 for that value and it assigns. Now the result average new value would be 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 at the first row. Um, this is again with uh, with the assumption that the probability of winning is 0 0.4, losing is 0 0.4 and tie is 0 0.2 based on the circumstance. And this is going to be applicable to all the teams without any biasing. So you can just do the assumption according to your preference. I'll be doing it quickly for all and assign a next breakpoint at this stage and I'll show you the value result underscore average. So at this point all the values has been assigned. Now there may be situation where 0 and 1 are coming. So even 0 is something which we do not want the value to be aligned with. Uh, only due to the reason that you make the chance of winning against a particular team completely impossible. So we don't want that. So wherever the win percentage is found 0, we will be changing it with 0 0.01, 0 0.99 and 0. So this is near to uh, near to that complete 0, 1, 0, but again you are giving it a some value. If you want you can even put it like a factor 0 0.1 over here or uh, let's say even you want 0 0.09 over here, 0 0.9 over here and 0 
zero one over here. So this is again based on your preference. You can do it according to your uh, thinking. What uh, you feel, what you feel a team should be changed into, factorized into. What I am going to do is I'll keep it point zero one, point nine nine over here, and zero over here. Okay. So here this is zero one and zero. So this is gonna work and change change it for the final row and let me show it to you so the code actually changed directly and it worked without breaking uh, all right so you don't have that but let me just show you the final result which is table out so the table out value has been changed into 0 0.01 over here 0 0.99 over here which we wanted uh, there wasn't any scenario where win percentage was 1 but just like we did for uh, win percentage as 0 we are doing it similarly for win percentage as 1 changing it to 0 0.9 0 0.01 or and 0 please make sure that whatever you are doing over here it's similar to the position at win percent 1 don't do it differently in the two scenarios so this completes our data import as well as pre-processing for the file of uh, team performances in the cases of team versus team there are other factors which we will need to work on so i'll be discussing about them now okay so now i'll be moving on to data import for team versus team scenario for that i would like to show you the team versus team this is team performance in world cup but we let's say we are going to do team versus team in world cup scenario now the difference between team performances and team versus team performances addition of that versus part which we have already covered up uh, we will need to add a column for a position and we will need to remove the additional rows to make the code in a proper order so what we are going to do is let's start in the matlab code this is the data import team versus team code file uh, start row is always going to be 2 we are going to pass workbook file with only the xls file name so that uh, since my system has the data folder containing all this excel file i'm keeping a data folder additional part in the line uh, the file are read mm, processing is done wherever something is not coming properly let's assign it to zero and you get the table output so up till this moment it's more like you have received and you have got the data uh, let's try and find out what kind of um, output it is expecting so table data import team performances uh, rather than data import it would be t versus t that is tvt wc team performances in world cup uh, 10y so 10y is going to be data until row number 309 so this is true i have added a breakpoint at line number 45 so i would like to check the table output at that particular moment run the code is running since the data is big it took a time to come but we have a table output at this stage this data isn't in a proper form so we need to convert it into a proper structure all right so we have passed a wrong file and this is an example even though the wrong file has been passed it took the data and it showed it with the blanks because we have added the code to add blanks wherever the file isn't giving the proper value let me close it and let me correct that for you so it's not team performances it's gonna be team versus team in world cup and now we are going to get a proper table this time so the table out so <laughs> Although this is a proper table, but again we are going to operate so that this versus first indies is removed. Uh, the whole row is removed. In the similar form, we are going to get 
proper opposition in a separate column so we are doing it step by step uh, we have took the length or length variable started from the second element because every second element is having this blank row except the team name with including a v uh, that is v versus for it so what we are doing is we are fetching the team and assigning it value from 3 to end into a new structure with the property opposition so we do it continuously and we reach to the stage like we have got the new row if you want to see you can see it new row a position containing one cross 154 struct array uh, so next we create a temporary table t1 from the value original value of table out and every second value from first till the length will come into that so if you're gonna see what t1 contains t1 contains all the values which matches and we are going to append t2 beside the team part of t1 this can be done from fetching the first column adding t2 and then appending rest of the columns inside t so as of now if we move two more step we have this table t containing team opposition span match won loss tied no result uh, win loss average run per hour innings highest score and lowest score uh, for this code logic we are just utilizing the fact which i have already shown you so win factor is win upon matches minus no result was in the overall figure parameter now we are talking about against a position so i'm trying to show you another way to find out the probability rather than using the same way so even though in this particular scenario we also have we can find out win percentage low per, uh, loss percentage and tie percentage we are going to use the different formula of win plus 0.5 multiplication of tie that is let's say agar if there are five matches which has been tie between two countries out of let's say 10 matches so this is also a win factor considering half uh, win giving it as a half win to a particular team so that is a win factor scenario and we are not going to use any loss factor or tie factor in this thing we are going to assume tie factor as 0.02 uh, when it's when it comes to that stage but for now we are just going to identify the table so we are back to MATLAB I have already shown you like uh, we are going to have World Cup teams 10 teams in the proper structure like this South Africa, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, India, England, Pakistan, West Indies and Australia this is exactly the structure I have followed in this code as well uh, table can be created as a 0 by default can be created as 1 it can be done into a different form structure only thing is uh, make sure that you have a standard following procedure in it so wh why I'm doing 0 0.01 over here is later on in the code we try to find out where the value is 0 and we replace it with 0 0.01 so rather than doing it at that moment let's just start the value all the initial value with 0 0.01 so you might find in a situation I am playing against myself and I have a chance of winning of 0 0.01 against me so that is something like a meaning which is uh, not useful but yeah again you don't have any chance against winning yourself so that's the point uh, next we are going operating and finding out the team index so in this index we have already defined the teams and we are going step by step uh, all the teams in the t vector in the t table are going to follow this structure we are going to find out first of all what is the index of the team in the first part and then we are going to find out index of the opposition team only and only if both team and opposition are in uh, in the world cup in the 10 countries which are playing we are going to consider them consider them as a factor for calculation if the particular match is not having the value for uh, let's say i am going to talk about india versus kenya or zimbabwe versus kenya now neither zimbabwe is playing the world cup nor kenya is playing the world cup so it's useless to process that value so we will be talking about how we have removed those conditions so first we try to compare whether the team is blank if the team is not blank that means it contains some value and it try to find out whether the world cup team is uh, containing that value or not so let's say right now the value of i is one i'm just trying to show you the same thing now contains world cup teams team of i there should be two so there are 10 teams out of which t dot team i con is uh, containing the value 
uh, if we are going to use find one so this is like finding where the value came as one and it gives us the index index came five now if i would like to check t dot t my as per my world cup team one two three four five fifth is afghanistan so t dot team i at this moment should be afghanistan this is afghanistan so that means you have found the current team index as five and that is true so next you do is uh, you also check out whether the there is an empty index so if there is an empty index you just skip that loop and move on to the next i value since this is not empty it's going inside the condition and again it will try to find out whether the opposition team is going to play the world cup or not so let's first see what is the opposition team t dot opposition i australia yes australia is playing the world cup and as per this standard rule we are going to use 10 as the number of australia now this fine thing shall give us the answer 10 so see this versus index that is vs underscore idx is having the value of opposition team me underscore index is having the value of current team who is going to play the uh, play the match so we are just checking whether the index is empty in case the index comes empty you are saying that the value is completely useless for us skip the loop and if it is not empty that means it contains the value and at that particular moment you just need to find out what is the value based on the formula we are showing in here so let me show you in a big screen so win factor win plus 0.5 multiplied by tie divided by matches minus no result so we are back to the matlab win plus 0.5 times multiplied by t dot tied divided by match minus no result now this thing is going to give us the value this is going giving us value zero now let me take you to the team versus team and that is for in uh, Afghanistan versus Australia they have played one matches won zero lost one so based on this rule uh, zero plus 0.5 multiplied by tie divided by one minus no result zero zero upon one is zero and you are getting the value is zero that is true now what we are doing next is like uh, we don't want to keep the value or give someone a probability of zero uh, so we just change that value zero to zero point zero one at that particular instant itself in the same fashion if the value comes as one like let's say only one match has been played and you won that match so rather than giving you a value one we will be taking it as 0 0.99 so just going to that uh, a minor change in mathematics to take us to a result which can have a predictability to all the possible scenarios of a game so that's another two scenarios which i have implemented is if the value is coming as infinity so there might be a scenario when let's say one match has been played and that match neither won neither lost and you get it as a no result so this formula would give you in that scenario something divided up, divided by 1 minus 1 0 that is something divided by 0 and infinity so if some if uh, your value is coming as infinity what you are going to do or what we have done is just change that value to 0.33 so we are considering at this moment the possibility of winning losing and tie as equal that is 0.33 whenever there is this uh, chance of no result and matches clashing and there is no no, inf no information to us in the similar fashion if when we get value as not a number that is uh, some vague operation is happening or there is not even the team who is playing and you get not a number in that scenario as well you change it to value as 0 0.33 and once you have done it you assign it to a table which is our the result table so the mean index at this time was 5 and vs versus index was 10 so fifth row 10th column should be assigned value uh, 0 which got changed into 0 0.01 let's see since everything is 0 0.01 i'm properly thinking that everything would be 0 0.01 at this time so this time you are not able to see the result let's see if something comes up in the next match so let's add a breakpoint at uh, over here every breakpoint is clear and we just add a breakpoint over here and let's run it step by step so i'm clicking on continue uh, let me do it a couple of times so i've done it a couple of times and now i'll see what is the value of tab 
so see the matches have been played and it has tried to find out the value wherever the value could not be identified it replaced one changed to 0.99 and there is some practical values coming then 0.667 that is also happening so this in this way or in this approach we are going to fetch all the data once all the data has been fetched and has been assigned into tab the loop is going to terminate and we will have the answer in our final matrix so i'm just going to click on continue the final answer is inside this 10 cross 10 double table and this table contains the values this is the result value 0 0.1 0 0.01 sorry so these are the different values and these are the average result uh, for the table scenario of the match So this was the session covering up the portion of pre-processing, data fetching and as of now we have covered up all the portion of getting the data into our MATLAB. In the next session we are going to talk about the application designing and how we are going to take the data input and we are going to play the games. Are you excited for the MATLAB simulation of the Cricket World Cup 2019? Well I am and I hopefully you are as well. So see you guys in the next session. So guys, what do you think about the current session? Did you interest? Did you found this interesting and learn something new? Well, don't worry, and we are going to make something new even in the next session. So currently we have talked about fetching the data into MATLAB as well as we have applied the pre-processing. We have talked about how can the data uh, used in the Excel sheet, how can the data be manipulated and what are the conditions which are required to change in our program. Let's talk about the next part where we will be uh, generating an app. Can you think about what would be the requirement or what would be, how can you actually utilize that data to predict who is going to win the match? Think about it and comment in the section down below. And if you are looking for any support in MATLAB or Simulink, contact our support team at matlabhelper.com. Stay tuned for the next video which is going to be in the third session where we will be talking about application designing for World Cup 2019 app simulation.